I love road movies. I love Vegas movies. And I'm weirdly invested in the slightly more unpopular works of Kevin Costner. So it was only a matter of time until I brought this one up. Hey man, it's always a pleasure taking care of business with you. Hello, and welcome back to The Attic with me, Lou. Today, I'm going to be talking about 3,000 Miles to Graceland, the Elvis movie that isn't actually an Elvis movie. I was a little bit reluctant to rewatch it because at one time in my life, I thought that this was so cool and I really didn't want to ruin that for myself, but I did because it turns out not the best. Didn't think so. Now look, I'm not saying that there's not potential there, okay? When I tell you that the premise of this movie involves a bunch of people robbing a casino whilst dressed as Elvis, you might be curious. When I tell you that those people are Kevin Costner, Kurt Russell, Bakeem Woodbine, David Arquette, Christian Slater, you might even be tempted. But pump the brakes for just a second, because we're going to get into it. So to keep it real simple, Kurt Russell plays Michael, an ex-con who participates in a money heist led by his former cellmate and partner in crime, Murphy, played by Kevin Costner. All right, everybody stay cool. As mentioned, the robbery takes place in the Riviera Casino in Las Vegas, and that is probably the best scene in the whole movie. <laughs> Plus, I really enjoy a gun-toting Elvis in Las Vegas, but that's mostly because I used to play as one in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. But yeah, after the robbery, it all goes downhill because Costner double-crosses his buddies because he wants to keep all the money for himself, but Russell gets the money before he does, but he can't spend the money because the notes are marked, so it's a race against time to see who will come out on top with some spendable cash. You find the money, you'll find the girl. <clears throat> hey, hey, Zane, hey. <clears throat> there is also the love interest, Sybil, played by Courtney Cox, who gets caught up in all of this because she also wants the money because she's a single mother and she's trying to raise her child. God damn it, Sybil, stop this car! She is needless to say, an underdeveloped female character written very clearly by and for men, um, which is such a shame because Courtney Cox is so much more than that. She's Gail Weathers for crying out loud. But other than her, there aren't really any female characters in this movie. I think the best female character is the news reporter that is on screen for all of two seconds. But this movie isn't about women. It's about men and their unhealthy obsession with Elvis Presley. So let's talk about the men. Oh, you men are all alike. First off, what a noteworthy casting choice in Kurt Russell. A, because he previously played Elvis in the John Carpenter biopic, and B, because he made his acting debut by kicking the real Elvis Presley in the shin. Ah! Uh, it's a good one, it's a good one, boy. Net. He also understandably does a decent impersonation of the guy. Thank you, Meryl. Thank you very much. It adds up. Kurt Russell as a likable ex-con with a tarnished past and a smile that'll get the ladies into bed. It makes sense to me. More curious is Kevin Costner as the antagonist. You ever kill one from this close, Jay? What are you... Hmm? Are you nuts? Probably. It's an odd choice, to say the least, but I'm obsessed with it. Because at this point in his career, Kevin Costner was typically associated with charming and heroic roles, and the character of Murphy is simply horrendous. I'm not talking visually, although his sideburns are obnoxious. Take a look at those sideburns. 
And what is it with those sideburns, anyway? I mean, I, I glued mine on for the job. For you, it's an actual lifestyle choice, for Christ's sake. Awful, awful hair. And he wears the most unflattering leather trousers throughout. Oh, God love him. But he's also just a cliche of a bad, law-breaking troublemaker. <laughs> like, it's a marvel that he's not still in prison because we see him necking Jack Daniels whilst driving, blowing up gas stations, dueling pistols with roadside cops. There is legitimately a moment where bad to the bone plays whilst he's driving alongside a motorcycle gang, wearing sunglasses and smoking and getting a from a young lady that he picked up at the gas station. Oh, there's another female character for you. But what makes his character all the more fascinating is that he is convinced that he is the illegitimate child of Elvis Presley, and he will not have anyone make fun of Elvis because he takes it all very personally. So who said the king is down? Come on, man, we're just having a little fun back here. I know. So who said it? I said it, Murphy. <laughs> Don't say it any fucking more. Uh, it's just a joke. It wasn't fucking funny. As for the others, Bakeem Woodbine makes his exit way too early. Miss me, bitch! Christian Slater is underutilized. Murph, I've been doing this a long time and I've never dropped down on anybody. You want to keep blowing smoke in my fucking face, you want me to blow your head off? Huh? And David Arquette makes a bunch of sexist jokes and farts. <laughs> And he's still probably one of the best things about this movie. Don't you match, fucker. Don't you match. I have to mention there is more than one fart joke in this movie as well. Oh, God. Farts are quite funny. Hey, you want one of these refreshing beverages? I am good, thank you. No, get back to work. Thomas Hayden Church and Kevin Pollock play the feds tracking them down. And again, what a waste of good talent. Quick, why do they call it a head butt? I mean, it's not like I knocked that prick out by slamming my forehead into his ass. Yeah, that's true. For a lineup as strong as this and a concept as alluring, it's just disappointing. It really does lose its steam after the Elvis costumes and Christian Slater disappear. And the whole thing just feels way too long. I stand by the fact that it's a cool concept. Like, if you took the first chunk of this movie and condensed it into a five minute music video, like, that would be sick. But it's not five minutes, it's two hours. And only a small portion of that time is actually dedicated to Vegas and Elvis impersonators. And that's what I came here for. And you can't blame me for that when the poster looks like this. And for a movie with a poster like this, you wouldn't necessarily expect the opening credits to be two CGI scorpions fighting each other to heavy metal rock. But it is. That's not to say Elvis doesn't make an appearance on the soundtrack. There's, of course, a song or two of his. In fact, one song they liked so much, they used it twice. It was a night. Who it was, it really was. Such a night. Catchy. Catchy song. It's played once during the start of the robbery, which is dope, and I'm here for it. Such a night. And then again at the end, during the credit scene, where all the actors are dancing around, having a good time. But I, gave my heart away, I also want to mention that Follow Me by Uncle Cracker gets played. And that is such a throwback. I haven't thought about that song in a very long time. I don't think this movie knows what vibe it's going for. There's a few big scale action scenes. And then the rest is just driving. Although Kevin Costner does have this moment. You travel alone? Not unless you count Team Spirit. Mm. Which, uh, it is quite fun. Look. Is this movie a bit of a mess? Yes. Was it nominated for a bunch of Razzies? Yes. Is it something I would have written when I was a teenager? Yes. Do I wish I hadn't revisited it 
at this point in my life. Yes. All I can say is I really hope they had fun making it. Let me know in the comments if you grew up watching it, or if you watched it in later life and regretted it, or if you're a big fan of it. Are you team Russell or team Costner? That's what I want to know. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go grow out my sideburns and I will see you in the next one. But until then, a little less conversation, a little more action. Por favor. It was a kiss. Oh, what a night it was, it really was. Such a night.